Welcome to the DAC Podcast. My name is Lydia Miller, and in this podcast, I'm talking through the things that I'm learning in an MBA program and how I'm applying that information to my small business. Thanks for joining me. Now let's get started. Welcome back, business owner. I am thrilled to have you here today as we talk about how to implement strategies in your small business. And I think strategy is kind of a buzzword these days. It kind of seems like a mystery and something that everyone's trying to get to, but you don't really know the formula to get there. And so hopefully by the end of this episode, you'll know how to implement a marketing strategy or at least have a starting point to know which direction you want to take your marketing in. And I just want to remind you of a few things that's going on around DAC Balance. And if you haven't already joined our private Facebook community, please do. I would love to have you and continue the conversation around these podcasts and all things business ownership. You can go to my website at LydiaGMiller.com and find more information there. So now let's get into the content. So when you think about your small business, do you feel overwhelmed When I first started, I didn't have really a clue what I was doing. My goal was to just get some clients, but I really didn't have a plan on how to do that. I didn't know how about marketing much at the time, and so when this content came up in my marketing class that I took for my MBA, I was thrilled to finally know some of the framework on creating a marketing strategy. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about some just generic strategies and what people have used to market and grow their business. Okay, so as far as implementing strategies goes, the first strategy we're gonna talk about is a cost strategy. And there are two sides to this, and one is horrible and one is fantastic. And this, the fantastic one is what I'm trying to implement now. So let's start with the worst of them all. Um, It seems to be fairly common among newer businesses that are, you know, first starting out and that are just getting their feet wet. And in the cost strategy, you are trying to be the lowest price in your market. So this means that you are intentionally pricing yourself below market value, below your competition and below what your services or products are worth. And this often backfires because you know, personally, whenever I'm looking to hire, let's say a photographer for something, I'm not going to go with someone just because they are the least expensive. And actually, if I see someone who is inexpensive, I automatically assume that they are low quality and not what I'm looking for. And you can't win in business if you try to be the lowest price. There's the other side of the cost strategy as well, and this is a smart way to do it, I think, and you're not necessarily the cheapest, but you use your technology to become more efficient and to provide a higher quality item for less. So in this strategy, your goal is to be super efficient and getting more done with fewer resources. You're trying to eliminate waste wherever you can in your business, and you're trying to cut out any unnecessary expense from your budget to make room for more profits. You're also figuring out how to get your raw materials cheaper while still maintaining the quality that you have decided is your target. And right now, I'm actually working to do this in my own business by making everything digital, creating systems for all the different aspects of my business, and to create unique experiences for each client while still maintaining a lower cost um, for my business. Um, If you want to implement this strategy, using technology, using apps, and things like that make it a lot easier. Um, You know, doing anything digitalized or automatically, it's going to help your business in the long run because you can become more efficient and streamlined. So what I want you to do if you're trying to do the strategy is to embrace technology and not run from it. So those are the two different sides of a cost strategy. One side is to be the lowest price in your field, in, um, in your market, and the other is to create prices that are on par with everybody else, but internally create strategies that use technology to streamline your business, to cut out expensive expenses, and to make your business uh, more profitable that way. So those are a couple different types of strategies that you can use for your business. And what it looks like with the marketing, if you're trying to be the lowest cost, then you're advertising that that you're cheaper than everybody else and that you're starting out and that these are beginner prices and you really don't wanna do that because your customers kind of expect that after a while. And if you're using the other side of the cost strategy, then you are telling your customers that you are efficient, that you give a high quality item or you give a high quality product and that you are consistent and that you deliver the same results over and over and over again to them so that they are so happy with you every single time that they get your product. 
Those are the two different ways that you can market your business. And if you want to take that as your unique perspective, then those are the ways that you can start out doing that and then create your marketing and your um, advertising language around those types of things. Okay, so the second type of strategy that you use is differentiating yourself from other companies in your industry. Now, you might think, well, duh, of course we're going to do that. But sometimes the obvious things aren't quite so obvious. So this is going to be crucial if you are in a highly competitive market where your customers have a lot of options and a lot of need for your product or service. So here are a couple different ways that you can differentiate yourself. Number one, you can niche down. Niche, niche, I don't know. My husband makes fun of me for the way I say it, but I've heard it both ways. So I'm going to say niche and that's what we're going to go with. Okay, so niching down. This is incredibly scary, especially when you don't have a lot of customers or clients and you're still wanting to grow. It seems like excluding people that you're trying to market to or um, accepting if you're a service-based business can seem counterproductive. But if you want to be seen as an expert or thought of as a leader then you have to do this. This also makes it easier to target who you want to get in contact with. And when people refer you, they will know exactly what you do. Now this process does take time. You have to think through your ideal client and the attributes that you want them to have as well as the needs that they have for your product. Okay, so a second way that you can different you can differentiate yourself is to offer unique attributes. I'm thinking about the photography industry here. I know we talked about it a few minutes ago. And so maybe your unique attribute is that you offer film photography, maybe Polaroid photography. I don't even know if that's a thing. It probably, you know, it might be for somebody would love that. And so maybe you create products for those types of photographers or for those types of clients that you have. And so all your marketing and all of the things that you put on social media and you talk about is that you are unique because you offer film photography and here are the benefits of film photography. That's what you would blog about. That's what you would post about all of your images that you put online, even if, you know, they're obviously digitalized, but you can say, hey, I took this with a film camera. This is the quality that you're getting. Okay, another way to differentiate yourself is to position yourself as a luxury good. Now, this might seem different for different industries. So, for example, the day planner that I use, they run for almost $60 each, which is definitely on the higher end for day planners. And some of you are thinking I'm ridiculous and rolling your eyes at this. But because I can go to Target and get one for $5 right now, not a problem. It does the same thing. It shows the dates on there in the calendar. It has places for me to write down what's going on. And it's really not, a calendar is a calendar. You can get them for free online. I could just print them out, no big deal. But the brand that I use has positioned itself to be a higher quality good. It's a luxury good. And they provide content year round and I use that content. So when it comes time, you know, in September for me to purchase my planner, I am more than happy to spend the $60 because they have provided content and value to me all year long. I think that's a great strategy, especially for businesses that are seasonal and luxury to provide content all year long based on the product that they're using or based on the mission of their company. Um, And that's what you would post about. That's what you would blog about. That's what you would be really intentional about communicating to your customers for your marketing so that when your customer thinks of your brand, that's what they're bringing to mind. Those is those qualities that basically your mission statement without actually knowing your mission statement. That's what they bring to mind. Okay. So the next strategy is going to be the focus strategy. And this is one that's very unique and interesting to me. So in this strategy, you are so niche down that you have no other competition. So in this industry, it's typically product-based businesses and you're typically serving collectors or small groups of people who need a certain good. So you aren't going to have a huge market in this strategy because only a small percentage of the population even wants this item and is willing to spend money on it. So you have to dominate the market to make this sustainable. I have a, so if you're in that focus strategy for your marketing, what I would do is make, it's find those collector groups, find the groups on Facebook, find them at, find uh, maybe in a certain part of the country is where the people who collect that item really typically live. Maybe you do targeted Facebook ads to that part of the country for your product. 
Um, it could be that you go to craft fairs in that area, or maybe you go to their county fair and you set up a booth or something like that, where you can get in contact with those people who are going to want your item. <clears throat> it's very interesting to me to have no other competition, but you're still serving people. And really, if you are trying to get into a market like that, and there's already other competition there, just know that they if they're dominant right now it's going to be really really difficult to take market share from them if i were you i would probably go to them and see if you can team up or if they're looking to get out of that industry or retire maybe they feel obligated because they know nobody else is doing that but maybe you want to help take it over i would actually go to them and see what their plan is if they'll tell you if they're planning on leaving the market or retiring or something like that um, if you're looking for that strategy it can be difficult um, to get ahead especially because you just have so few people who need that and on the other side of it is you do have very few people who need that but if you found another use for that item you could increase the market in that just because there's not a lot of people there right now. It's not like everyone's already bought something like that. So you could find another part of the market and advertise to them and find a use for your product that they could use for sure. So those are just a few of the very generic strategies that people can use for their business for different ways that you can take it. You've probably thought of a few businesses as I was talking about, oh, they use that strategy or, oh, that's why they're doing that. And so once you start to decide on the generic strategy that your business is going to take, then you can dive deeper and really be able to um, tell yourself no to some things that might seem like great opportunities, but really aren't in the lane that you're trying to do so that you can be very efficient and very productive with your marketing and let it work for your business. Okay, so I have a few book recommendations for you if you want to learn more about what we talked about today. If you're thinking about cost strategy and are needing and are needing help making your business really lean, this is not the cost strategy where you um, decrease your prices because I don't think you should do that. But if you're just trying to cut out the waste in your business, then I want you to check out the book Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. So they talk about in this book how you create how you can create a more profitable business and how you can cut down on any unnecessary expenses. Um, it's a great book and especially around tax time if you just got your tax bill and realized oh I do not have enough money to cover that and you thought gosh I really should be saving for taxes all year round this method is fantastic to help you save for taxes as well as bring in a profit once a quarter and to pay for everything and to really have that peace of mind that everything is covered in your business financially. I would really highly recommend that to any first or second or even whatever your business you're in. I would highly recommend that book and implementing it as well. Okay, so if you're looking for a book on niching down, check out the book Book Yourself Solid by Michael Port. That book is really great because he walks through how you decide on who your audience is, who your niche is, and how you can serve them and how you can get directly to them. I'm in the middle of reading it right now and I've learned so much already and I can't wait to really implement most of it in my business in these next few months. Okay, so if you're looking for some specific social media strategies, I want you to check out the book Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. This is also a great book because it goes through all the different social media platforms and how you can use each one effectively and to it, the best potential that it has. So if you go to my show notes, you will get a direct link to these books and it will take you to Amazon. And for full disclosure, if you do purchase this book, I will get a small commission at no extra cost to you, but it helps me, um, the revenue helps me with this podcast and I would really appreciate it. And so I hope you've heard something that you can implement today that will help you with your business. And if you have a business and are wanting someone to help you out in a strategy session or maybe to talk more about your business or to help get some direction on what you're doing, I would love to do that with you. You can go to my website at lydiagmiller.com to find out more. And if you have any specific questions on what we talked about today, feel free to email me at lydia at dacbalance.com. And I hope you join me next week as we answer the question, who are you in your industry? I hope you have a great week. 